replacing background in photography can be quite challenging task. You need to remove the background, then replace it, color match it and blend it all together. Luckily, in Luminar Dio, with a few simple tips, this can be quite easy. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's move into the application and start now. Okay, so it's time to tackle the background removal task. Well, we are already in Luminar Neo. We are in the catalog module. And as often, we are starting by looking at our sample files. Now we have the final result. So this is what we're going to be creating. And then we have the actual sample files. We have the backdrop as well as the model. And as always, if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the sample files. Now, as I said, part of it will be the image with the lady backdrop and also folder with an LUT that we will use towards the end for the color grading. Now that is all out of the way, import the image and let's start. So sample file, we have it all selected and we can move it into the edit module. Now talking about the background removal, it's kind of automatic here in Luminar Neo. So what we need to do, we're going to go into our editing toolbar, open the layer properties where we have an option of properties and masking. So let's go into masking where towards the bottom, you will see two options, portrait background and background removal. We're going to go for the portrait background. So let's select it and give it a moment. Now, by doing that, the application will scan the image and prepare automatic mask. So then when you click on remove, it will actually remove the background for us. It only takes a few seconds and here we have the result. It looks quite all right. We have some problem with the transparency over the hair, but other than that, it's not too bad. So how do we adjust this? Well, if you're happy with it, just click on portrait background and go back. But we can fine tune it by going into the refinements brush. Once we do that, this crazy uh, colorful option appears with the different overlays. And pretty much we have a three sections here, three sections on the image, three sections in our brushes. So we have a three brushes starting with a purple blue that indicates the area that will be removed and on our brushes, that's the background area. After that, we have the orange yellow and that's the area which will remain on the image and which represents the object. So the second brush. And finally, the area which is kind of transparent um, going around the edges of the subject and the background and that's the transition area. And sometimes you need to play around with these to get the right result. Now, as you can see, it's not a perfect selection. You don't go with the background and perfectly select the background and then object perfectly select the object. Those are just the area to give the AI chance to understand what you want to remove. So, for example, if we zoom in and again, we can do that using the wheel on our mouse or command or control plus and now we're going to select the object and we're going to extend the object to make the ai aware that we want the hair to stay so just a simple brush stroke over this area something like this which just like magic give us the hair now looking at it we have a similar problem on the other side so let's brush over this area and that will give us the hair back we can do that on the top as well just to make sure and i think that already looks much better better. Now, do I have a nice place where I can show you? Yes, here, the transition. So let's select the transition. And with this transition selected, we can now brush over this area of the dark space, which I also want to remove. Once I brush over it, it takes a second and you can see that it creates nice cutout there. Now it took a little bit of the dress. So to bring the dress back, select the object, and brush over the dress just to make sure that it's also selected equally on the other side. And that's about it. If you want to remove a little bit of the gray there, you can select the background brush, make it a little smaller and just brush in this area here, something like this. Maybe you can go even closer if you want to. And like this, you would go on and remove different parts. For example, this one right here, but but 
Sometimes it's actually better or smarter to do it with the background already on so we can see the mistakes. So let's do that. For now, I'm happy. There's nothing really uh, standing out. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on the portrait background with a little arrow. That will bring us back nicely. And it's time to bring in our background. Now, to do that, we're going to need some layers. So let's go into layers panel where we're going to select the plus sign and we need to click on the load image. From here, navigate towards the sample files where you should see the red backdrop. And by the way, this red backdrop is from our romance bundle. And now romance bundle has a several backdrops, red one like this, as well as pastel and much more. It has beautiful LUTs, presets, overlays, textures, and so much more. So if you would like more backdrops like this, definitely check out our romance bundle by following the link in the description of this video or by heading to our website, cleverphotographer.com. So backdrop selected, let's click on open. Now we have it in my images section where we can just click on it. And just like magic, it appears now. It doesn't look great, right? Well, it's selected. We can see the orange um, frame around it in layers and on the image. So first thing we need to do once we have it selected is increase the opacity, not 50, but to 100. Beautiful, right? But of course it's above the subject. So what we need to do into the layers, take the backdrop and bring it behind the model. And looking at it, you can see that actually it looks quite good. You know? There is not really a big problems with cutouts. There is a little bit of transparency over the hair, which is quite realistic because the flowers are behind her anyway. So I think for the mask, looking at it, it looks quite good. So we're going to leave it for the time being. Anyway, coming back to our backdrop, let's zoom out a little bit uh, and we can make it a little bit bigger if we want to, to create something like this. Of course, that we can also at the same time select the model and move her around. You know, we can bring her down a little bit to get a little bit of extra space. Yeah, whatever we like. So I think just something like this. Once we're happy with the position of the model and backdrop, then it's time to continue. Next step. So we have removed the background, bring the new backdrop. The next thing we need to do is actually color grade or let's say color match the two with each other. Now, this can be done a more complex way using curves in the develop tool, but with the arrival of the color transfer tool, this is actually much easier. So let's go ahead and use this magic. We're going to go back to layers, making sure that our subject is selected. Then, then navigate into our main editing toolbar, creative section, and somewhere on the top should be color transfer. Click on it to select it. And once you have it open, we need to add a reference image. So how does it work? The color transfer tool copies or transfer the color and luminosity from the reference image on your picture, which what we're going to do, we're going to take the backdrop as a reference image and apply it to our subject. So for that, we're going to click on the little library button and click on a plus sign. Again, navigate to our sample files where we're going to select our red backdrop. Click on open and give it a moment. What it's going to do, it's going to scan the image and match it. Usually the first result isn't great. Yes, it's a little bit darker, but it's a little bit, yeah, I would say too green. Uh, so we need to adjust this. How are we going to do that? Well, the amount, amount slider is on 60. Now we can play around with it. We can bring it down just a little bit, maybe to 50. And then color intensity. We want to bring it down just a little bit. I think it's too strong. So let's go for 70. And more importantly, we want to adjust our luminosity intensity. So by bringing it down, we're going to bring back a little bit of a life into this woman. So let's go for 50. Transition smoothing. We want to leave that on because that works quite well on this image. Uh, default is 75. I would even go for 80. So basically that smooth all the new colors and luminosity and color smoothing on this case doesn't really make much difference. So let's just leave it on default 30 and we can continue. If you think that the color is still not great, adjust it. I think we'll leave it on 65 for the time being. Let's have a quick look before and after. And once we have that adjusted, we can close it. If you're still not 100% sure, I think what it's missing is a little bit of magenta and maybe a touch of warmth. Once we have the subject selected, 
up to the essentials tool develop tool and here go into the color in the color add touch of warmth and also touch of magenta so just maybe one or two on warmth and <laughs> then on our magenta so that's about that now we have the subject we have the background now actually looking at the background i would just like to make it a little bit more soft i think it's a little bit too defined we're missing a little bit of depth so let's go ahead and select the backdrop then navigate to the creative section where we're going to select the blur tool in a blur tool make sure that you on gaussian and don't go crazy it just looks not so great uh, bring it down what i like to do is to bring it quite high and then bring it down until i like the result so for me actually i think maybe just somewhere around 403 is more than enough okay that's our blur so what have we done remove background replace it adjust it color match it and it's time to make it all work together now, every photographer does this little different way, but the way I like to do it is to blend the layers together and then apply a little bit of global adjustments to the image. Something like glow, color grading with LUTs or LUTs using additional effects or edits, just make it all work together. So let's do that. Now, here in Luminar Neo, we cannot actually merge the layers. So the easiest way to do that is to export the image in the highest possible quality and then bring it back. <laughs> so let's do that. Right click on the image, going into the export. In the export, navigate wherever you want to save it. I will save it into the location of the sample files. And I quite like to call this mid edit. It's up to you how you're going to call it, but I'm going to call it mid edit. Then, of course, into the exporting settings, sharpening on none. We don't want to add any extra sharpening. Keep the size on original, just the way it is. sRGB on color space is the way to go. And on format, we want to go for the highest possible quality, which in this case is the TIFF. Resolution 300 on pixel on inch is more than enough. And when it comes to compression, if you really want to go crazy, go for none. But I like to use the LZW because it just makes the files a little bit smaller. Depth on 16 bits. And as always, don't forget to uncheck the save transparency option. With that being done, we can now hit save and give the application a moment to export the image for us. Now, once it's ready, we can, of course, check if it's available in our film strip or probably go into catalog, add the photo, and then we can continue. For me, I already have it here, mid edit, as you can see. So let's take the image and again, bring it into edit module. Once we bring it in, you will notice that now we just have the one layer and that's what we wanted. So from here, different things we can do. First one is add a little vignette. So into the essentials tool, vignette bring down the vin amount let's say to somewhere around uh, minus 45 and then on the top of it just to add a little bit of contrast open the advanced settings and increase the inner right somewhere around 20. that's a good start after that we will move into the creative section different things we can do from here we will add lut at the end of everything so before that let's go ahead and enhance the candles a little bit further for this i love to use the magic light ai so let's open this tool and what we're gonna do we're gonna increase the intensity once i do that you will notice that it will select different areas for us the lights and candles and it will add nice effect to it glow and this little star effect personally i am not a big fan of the star effect some photographers like it I am not a massive fan of it. So what actually I like to do is to go into the beam width and just bring it down. This will remove the effect and all we adding is a nice glow and nice effect around the candles. By the way, looking at it, just bringing back the beam width, you can notice that <laughs> we're getting a little bit of extra glow here, which is not really necessarily. I don't think there is a candle there. I'm not sure about here, but we will check that in a moment. And we have a couple of lights and a couple of candles that are not marked. So how can we fix this? Super easy. Let's just zoom in, for example, here. 
Don't forget, brush selected, use the space bar to move around. Make sure that you on art with the brush and just one click over the candle, second click over this one. Then select delete and remove this one right here because there's nothing there. Make the brush a little bigger and also remove this one. Back up and let's zoom in. Let's have a look in this area. Is this actually a candle? Let's have a look. I think it's more reflection. So I leave it up to you if you want to add it or not. I maybe will just very small one here. Yeah. And then on the top, there is a little reflection of the chandelier in a, in a window, in a mirror where we can again, one click, two clicks and three clicks. And this way we adding, yeah, looking at it, we adding the effect everywhere. Back to our adjustments here, bringing the beam width down. And again, up to us, we can add extra glow or bring it down or size wise, we can make it bigger or smaller, whatever we like and continue brightness and so on. Play around with it and have a lots of fun. I'm just going to bring it down just a touch. So that's the magic light AI playing around with the background, enhancing it, yeah, just having a little bit of fun. Now we are almost finished. One more thing we're going to do little mystical tool to make it a little more cinematic. So just increase the amount option and then going into our mood tool where we're going to add our LUT from the sample files. How to do that? Click on choose LUT dropdown box, click on add custom LUT file and back one more time, last time into our sample files, open the folder with the LUTs, select the pastel dreams and click on add. Just like that, it gets applied to your image. And because it happened so fast, you may didn't see the difference. But when we look at the before and after, you can really see how it adds that very gentle pastel fade, little bit of warmth, and it just makes it work really well together. Great. I think it's looking great. Let's have a look at the before and after when we brought the image to mid edit and actually at the same time let's have a look if we can find the original photo which is this one we can reset it which will bring it back to where we started ladies standing in front of red background and this is no, I think it's this one this is what we have created together following different steps and just creating something nice and special so these are the elements that you can be using for your romantic portrait images. And one more reminder here, if you want to find out more about our romance bundle and get backdrops like this, LUTs, presets, overlays, textures, and so much more, check out the romance bundle on our website, cleverphotographer.com. But that's not the end. We actually have a quite cool playlist of the different romantic edits, which you can check out on our YouTube channel now. And on the top of it, we do have a video tutorial for every single tool in this application. So if you ever get stuck, if you ever need to remind yourself or refresh some of the sliders, then definitely check out our YouTube channel at Clever Photographer because we are here to help you. Anyway, Go ahead, have some fun and make sure that you share with us the results around our social media at Clever Photographer.